Good evening, Tom Brokoff here with Channel 3 News. Uh, tonight we have a very special guest. I'd like to welcome General Wolf here. General Wolf, it's nice to see you tonight, sir. I see you. Uh, I hear you have a few things to tell us. Yes, I do. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and let you do your own thing. Okay, I'll give you the update on this whole situation, sir. Well, me and my fellow British Army besieged Quebec with around 8,000 troops. I was the force major and made my way onto the plains of Abraham with around 4,500 men and one gun. The French commander and my opponent brought to the battle a force of around 5,000 and three, three, three guns. Montcalm formed his army from right a battalion of Canadian militia, then the regiments, and another battalion of militia. Skirmishing Canadians and Indians formed on the flanks. A savage fight developed on my left between the skirmishers and my British light infantry and the reserve regiments under Townsend. The three French guns and our single British gun fired at opposing lines. The French regular battalions advanced to attack our British regiment who had been laying down to avoid the fire, rose up and rose up. The French fired ineffectively at too great a distance and proved to be devastating to the French, but we withheld our fire until about 35 yards. Our volleys greatly destroyed the French line. We then advanced and drove the French from the field. It was a great victory, but I was wounded and sadly died. General Wolf, I thank you very much for that story. It was very nice. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, at this moment, I'd like to cut to a commercial break real quick. Bobby Light reporting for Channel 3 News. We have another special guest this evening, General Amherst. Good to see you. You too. I'm going to turn it over to him at this moment. Good evening. My name is Lord Jeffrey Amherst. First, a little bit about myself. I was only 40 years old at the time I was chosen to lead British forces in the attacks on Louisbourg and Quebec in 1758. Although I never had a truly independent, independent command, I managed to impress my, the most influential generals in the British Army as being unusually dependable, dependable and persistent as an officer. I, I entered the Army at the age of 14 and I won much praise for my steadiness under fire at the battles of Dittingen and Fontenay. Fontenay. In the year 1759, I led a group of British soldiers to take Ticonderoga and Crown Point. When preparing to run a siege train on the French at Fort Ticonderoga, they suddenly abandoned the works they had set up there. After the French left Fort Ticonderoga to avoid someone else taking the position, they attempted to blow up the fort. Their attempts were unsuccessful, only doing moderate damage to the fort's walls. On July 31st, 1759, I led the attack on Crown Point, taking the position with ease. After taking these two positions, I had to devote another 11 weeks to gain control of Lake Champagne. My troops had to build vessels and begin sweeping aside the French sloops that were blocking the way to Montreal. By mid-October, the lake was finally clear, but it was too late in the year to go on to St. Lawrence. By this time, I knew that Wolfe's army had taken Quebec and that Wolfe's forces on Lake Ontario had stopped short of St. Lawrence. Winter was fast approaching and the provincials under my command were chafing to go home. On October 19, 1759, I returned to Crown Point, thus ending the, my present military campaign. Thank you. Open! Fuck. That sucks, man. We gotta redo it. We'll come right. This is the Battle of Quebec. He over there is fighting for Wolf. I'm fighting for my calm.
This is Bobby reporting for Channel 3 News. Colonel William Johnson. Nice to meet you. I attacked Fort Niagara in 1759, part of the three-pronged attack. Prudhoe met me at Fort Oswego on June 27th um, with a thousand Iroquois Indians. We started to rebuild the fort after a few days me and General Prudhoe set out for Fort Niagara. We began rowing west along the south shore of Lake Ontario. We completely surprised the French in July. The Seneca abandoned the French and and left the fort under the flag of treaty. When Prudhoe when Prudhoe died, I had to assume the responsibilities of leading the whole attack by myself. Um, part of part of the three pronged attack, I had to take full responsibility for it. Um, In the end, it ended up pretty good. We lost 239 men, but we killed 109 French and captured 377. This is Chief Smelly Business doing his traditional war dance. Alright, Staff Sergeant Michael here. Uh, I'm currently in the Robert Rangers Division. Um, today we covered just about 30 miles from what we could tell on our map. Uh, as you can see, it's just getting to be the cover of darkness here. Uh, we've done eating our rations for the day. We're about to climb up in one of these trees and see if we can't get a couple hours sleep. Um, I'm on second watch tonight. Uh, hopefully tomorrow, by tomorrow afternoon, we'll reach Detroit. That's our main task. But uh, if we run into any sort of battle or problem with the engines, we uh, might slow us down a little bit. But as far as I can tell, we haven't had any major issues today. We had a couple little skirmishes, but those are just singles that were out in the woods by themselves. If we run into anything big, we're really going to have to get the guns out and do our best. But part of Rogers Rangers to be secretive. See the enemy before they see you. You'll stay out of trouble. Uh, I guess that's about all I have to say about today. Uh, I'll make sure to tune in tomorrow and let you know about how it goes when we reach Detroit. Right now? Yeah. We get, okay. I am an Indian. We've been tracking the Rangers, it's been rough, but um, we 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 we're going to find them. It's it's okay. We we're going to find them. We we've, we've been covering ground and and moving and stuff. And um, huh, some stupid crackers. We're going to find them. You know, I I mean, <coughs> we're going to find them. Me and me and my brother Indians, we we going to find them and scalp their heads off of their faces, and they're going to be like, "Oh my God, we don't have any heads." 
because we're going to cut them off. And it would be rough because the rangers are a couple of bad A's. And they're good at what they do, but we'll, we'll be alright. It's, it's cool. We, we got this.